Hi everyone, I'm Pete from the miniature painting channel, Pete the Wargamer, and in this video I'll be showing you how I'm painting this Gore Warrior from SPQR, and I'll be using the paints from the Army Painter range of paints to do so. To start, I assembled the model from the plastic kit and attached it to a base. This particular model isn't carrying a shield, but if he was, I would have painted this separately. Shields can block quite a lot of the body, so keeping them unattached generally makes painting the rest of the model much easier. Once built, I started off the whole painting process with some of the Army Painter's Leather Brown. Now you can do this in a few ways. You can prime and apply a layer of the Leather Brown, or you can simply use the aerosol primer version of the paint instead. Either way, the intention of starting with brown was to not only help with some of the warmer earth tones that this miniature features, but also because of the large areas of exposed skin. As brown is much closer to a natural skin tone than a pure black, grey or white would have been. On top of that, it would help to give the model a more dirty and grizzled look. Now that the model was primed, I began blocking out all of the base colours. My first base coat was of dirt spatter and this would be applied to the trousers. However, I first needed to thin it down with a little medium. This medium would create a mixture that was slightly less viscous and so could be applied quickly over the model, something that massively helps when you're trying to keep your painting time fairly low. As I applied the paint, I mainly kept my application of it towards the upper parts of the legs, so the tops of the thighs and not the inner thigh, for example. In reality, some areas of a person are darker than others, so by doing this, I helped create a little more realism in the miniature. A lot of Gaul Warriors featured clothing on various colours and patterns, and for this model, I wanted to create some vertical stripes of brown and yellow. I had already applied my brown in the last step, so I just needed a slightly dulled and dirty looking yellow, so I used some sulphide ochre. I had thinned down my paint as in the previous step and carefully applied some thick lines vertically down the legs, making sure that each of the stripes were evenly spread apart. With the trousers complete, I could move on to painting the areas of exposed skin on the model, of which there was quite a lot. As such, I approached the step a little differently than the previous base coats. I thinned my paint out as normal, but this time around I used some barbarian flesh and began to apply this over the model in a thin layer. I left this to dry and then applied a second layer over the top, but this time I only focused on the raised musculature of the torso, face and arms, rather than in the recessed areas. This not only helped with the definition in the model, but it also helped create a much more of a solid skin tone. For the hair and moustache, I chose to use the paint Fur Brown to create a reddish hair colour. Alternatively, I could have used some of the earlier dirt spatter for a brown tone, some skeleton bone for a blonde colour, or some necromancer cloak for some black hair. The final set of base colours were the metallic areas, and the first of these were the bronze areas, so I used the aptly named Weapon Bronze for this, and painted over the torque around the neck, the pommel and the cross guard of the sword, as well as the banding on the scabbard. To finish off the base coat, I used a base colour of gunmetal over the blade of the sword. Once this task was completed, I cleaned out my brushes and changed my paint water to prevent any cross-contamination of metal flakes into my other paints. With all the base coats completed, I could apply a wash. I use washes to help speed up my painting process, as it's an effective way to help bring out extra details without having to carefully build up layer after layer. Washes work by flowing into recesses and then darkening them down. This gives them the appearance of being shadows and creates a greater degree of contrast between the high and low points of your details. I used the dark brown wash of Strong Tone for this. This particular colour worked really well for all of the earthy base colours that I applied to this model so far. Not only that, but it also helped with that dirty weather look that I was looking to create. After allowing the wash to dry, I could have called the model completed. All I would have needed to do was to add some basing materials, but if you do have a little extra time and want to boost the details in a model, then you can do so with highlights. Highlights work really well against washes. Where washes darken recesses, highlights lighten the edges and raised areas, which helps to boost the level of contrast between these areas, boosting the level of detail. The first highlight I used was Alvin Flesh. This lighter skin tone was carefully applied over some of the skin details. I didn't cover the entirety of these areas. Instead, I just added a small amount to the most prominent details of the torso and facial features. Next, I used some desert yellow to highlight the string belt around the trousers. 
These were previously painted the same color as the trousers, but by highlighting them with this dark yellow, I helped to create a little separation. Finally, I wanted to create a bit of definition with some of the hair strands, and so used some of the lighter tone of tanned flesh to pick out these areas, while still retaining that auburn hair color. And with that, the model was very nearly completed. I just needed to varnish and then base the model, which left me with this. And here we have the completed Gaul Warrior. By following this guide, you should be able to complete your whole warband in no time at all. Now, while this guide focuses on just a warrior, the scheme could also be used to paint other Gaul Warband members too. So thank you for joining me for this painting guide. I hope that you've enjoyed watching and that you've been able to learn something from it. And so until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.